I know what you're asking. What is Pammy doing in the dark? Well, I'm Disney's Animal Kingdom, and I'm about to make my second attempt to ride Flight of Passage as a plus-size person. Come join me, and I'll share everything you need to know about being plus-size, accessibility, and even more for Flight of Passage. I have been trying for months and months and months to get a fast pass for Flight of Passage and I finally got one. Only it's at 8.20 at night. Normally I do the parks early in the morning when it's a little cooler and there's beautiful daylight. But when you get a fast pass for Flight of Passage, you take what you can get. Ooh, I've never been to Pandora at night. I'm so excited to see what it looks like. There's supposed to be lots of bioluminescence in here. Whoa, check out my shirt and my ears. Amazing. When I first tried Flight of Passage about a year and a half ago, I thought I weighed 350 pounds, but a week or two later after I posted the video, I went for my annual physical exam and found out I actually weighed 378 pounds. Since then, I've lost 30 pounds, and that may actually help me fit on this ride. So right now, I hover right at 350 pounds, and I'm five feet four inches tall. I carry most of my weight in my midsection around my belly and my hips. I also have very heavy thighs and thick calves, which might actually prevent me from sitting on the ride. The leg restraints are not very accommodating for plus size people, but I'm going to give it a shot. You never know, maybe it will work for me this time and I won't have to make an early exit. Wow, Pandora is absolutely amazing at night. Oh, this is amazing. Yes, this camera is not doing this view justice. It is just incredible. Just in case you're wondering, the entire queue for Flight of Passage is both EDC and wheelchair friendly. But strollers are not allowed. You do have to park those outside. Okay, even for fast pass, there's a lot of walking up inclines. Oh, this queue is spectacular. Oh. That is a heck of a walk. <laughs> and when you wait, the last leg of the wait, you are standing on an incline. So be aware of that. This is a 3D simulator ride. So you are wearing 3D glasses and you're fairly close to a screen with 3D images on it. The entire ride room lifts up and down. It also tilts forward and backward slightly. And the seat that you're sitting in is attached to the floor, but the seat itself will tilt from side to side. So if you're someone with some sensory concerns or you have motion sickness, you need to be aware that the room moves up and down, tilts forward and backward, and the seat itself will tilt from left to right. Supposedly all of those motions are kind of slow and gliding for the most part, but it is important that you know it because all of that motion can trigger issues for people who are prone to motion sickness or those who have certain sensory concerns. Over the past year and a half since I last rode this ride, I've done a lot of research and I learned some special tips that you can use to try and make the ride work for you if you're a plus size person. I'm really close to boarding the ride soon, so I'll share that with you after I try the ride. Please make sure you can all <laughs> see the screen. Hi, and welcome to the Avatar program. Soon, you're gonna have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi Rite of Passage, riding on the back of a banshee by being genetically matched and linked to an avatar. Okay, um, first we need to find the compatible match of your genetic material with the genetic material of one of the avatar bodies that we already have. If you follow our technician into the link chamber, you'll see a series of 16 link chairs. Please go to the number that matches the number you're standing on now. First, stow your gear in the storage containers on the back wall. This should include all bags, cameras, and other items, including cell phones. It's important to push them all the way into the bin. Then get onto the chair as you would a bike. Straddle the seat, step forward, and sit down. Slide your hips forward until you are against the chest pad, and then move your feet all the way forward. Wait until you're seated before you put on your flight visors. Hold onto the hand grips as shown. It's important to hold onto the hand grips at all times. 
After you're seated, back and leg restraints will be firmly engaged. For your safety, throughout this entire experience, always remain seated and super Well guys, I'm making an early exit, but I was so close, I was maybe this close with the leg restraints. I'm so excited because the back restraint locked with no issue. The leg restraints passed under my thighs without any problem. I just needed a little more give in order to get the restraints to lock on my calves. If I keep continuing on my healthy lifestyle kick, who knows, in a couple more months, this ride may actually work for me. So some of the tips that I used is I made sure that I wore leggings, which made it much easier for me to get on the ride and sit down and slide far forward. I also sat up very, very straight, and I got on my tippy toes as much as I could so that those restraints could pass under my thighs. Unfortunately, my calves are still a little too thick for them to lock in a place. But I know with time, it'll happen for me. Now, don't let the fact that I had to make an early exit stop you from trying this ride. The boarding experience is a lot of fun. The queue is gorgeous. And think about all that time that you're spending with your family, talking and laughing and making memories together. Oh, and you should know that when I exited the ride, they gave me two fast passes for any ride here or any other park over the next couple of days. The only restriction was for flight of passage and frozen ever after at Epcot. But it's the end of the evening, the park is about to close, and I'm gonna head home. Guys, hold your heads up high, try every ride. You never know what will happen. And remember, life is a roller coaster. Enjoy the ride.